Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the role of end product inhibition in regulating metabolic pathways. And this video is for the OCR and edXL specs. In the last couple of videos, we've looked at enzyme inhibitors. We've seen that enzyme inhibitors fall into two broad categories. Competitive inhibitors have a structure which is similar to the substrate. By binding to the active site, competitive inhibitors prevent the binding of the substrate molecule and this reduces or inhibits the activity of the enzyme. In contrast, non-competitive inhibitors do not bind to the active site. Instead, non-competitive inhibitors bind to a different site on the enzyme called the allosteric site. When the non-competitive inhibitor binds to the allosteric site, this causes the tertiary structure of the enzyme to change. Now the shape of the active site is altered, so it's no longer complementary to the substrate. And again, this reduces or inhibits the activity of the enzyme. Now enzyme inhibition plays a really important role in cells and that is in regulating metabolic pathways. A metabolic pathway is a series of reactions all catalyzed by enzymes. The product made by the first enzyme is then used as a substrate for the second enzyme. And the product made by the second enzyme is then used as a substrate for the third enzyme and so on down the pathway. There are many examples of metabolic pathways in cells. Some metabolic pathways break down a molecule. For example, in respiration, glucose is broken down in a number of stages to release energy. In other metabolic pathways, complex molecules are built up from smaller ones, for example, in the production of certain amino acids. Now, metabolic pathways such as these are tightly controlled. If we look at the example here, the amino acid made by this pathway will be needed when the cell is synthesizing proteins. However, under certain conditions, protein synthesis can slow down. Now, the cell will not require large amounts of the amino acid. If the pathway is allowed to run at its normal rate, then the amino acid will build up in the cell, and this will waste valuable resources such as energy. So the cell needs to reduce the rate of the whole metabolic pathway, and to do that, the cell uses end product inhibition. In end product inhibition, the final product in the pathway inhibits an early stage enzyme, and the effect of this is to reduce the rate of the metabolic pathway. Imagine in this example that the cell has a very low rate of protein synthesis. That means that the cell does not require large amounts of the amino acid. As the level of the amino acid increases, the amino acid attaches to and inhibits enzyme 1. Because enzyme 1 is the first enzyme in the pathway, the rate of the whole pathway is now reduced. If the cell increases the level of protein synthesis, then it will use the amino acid to make proteins, and the level of amino acid will decrease. Because there's now less amino acid present, there is less inhibition of enzyme 1, and the rate of the whole metabolic pathway increases, making more amino acid for protein synthesis. Now, end product inhibition is used widely in the cell to regulate a range of metabolic pathways. Another example is in respiration. The end product of respiration is the molecule ATP, which transfers energy around the cell. And ATP is an end product inhibitor of an early stage enzyme in respiration. So if the level of ATP becomes too high, it inhibits this early stage enzyme and causes the rate of respiration to decrease. And this causes the level of ATP to fall back within range. Now, there are a couple of points about end product inhibition that you need to remember. Firstly, end product inhibition is an example of negative feedback. That's because it's used to keep the levels of key molecules within a set range. And if the level varies, then end product inhibition brings the level back into range. Secondly, end product inhibition is an example of non-competitive inhibition. That's because end product inhibition takes place through the allosteric site of the enzyme. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the role of end product inhibition in regulating metabolic pathways. Mm -hmm.